You never see that many countries in one flight anymore than in Europe. That's awesome. <laughs> so that's, that's country number three today for you. No, four. Denmark, right? Austria, Czech Republic, Germany, and now Denmark. Cool. That's a lot of educational stuff right there. <laughs> We're flying two aircraft a long way. So the next three days, this is going to be my home. And I tell you what, I'm really excited about that. This episode covers leg one of the biggest general aviation trip I've ever been a part of. So Mickey is pulling out his airplane. Martin's just finishing up the final prep for the DA-62. This is it. I'm gonna cross the Atlantic. This adventure started with a one-way ticket from Canada to Austria. It was a red-eye flight. And I woke up to a beautiful foreign land with strange beds and weird power outlets. I had one day to spend here on some of the final tasks, including launching with Mickey for an acceptance flight in the brand new DA-42 that he'd be flying. I have to fly this one over the Atlantic, so it's cold up there. Yeah. So what I want really, what I really want that this aircraft is, is tight. You're looking for air leaks, right? I'm looking for air leaks, exactly. The previous episode from this series covers this acceptance flight in great detail, along with my familiarization flight in a DA-62 at the Canadian base. You can actually disable the ESP. Yeah, let's do that for now, sure. So, ESP's off, we'll get rid of the caution. Okay. Oh, you're fast, man. <laughs> oh, sorry, I should really slow down. I should no, no, making, it's good. I, I should just... be making you do all the button pushing. This flight with Jared was only a few days before departing for Austria, but we got a lot done, so I felt prepared. I think these guys have done this before. Love that you guys both get it perfectly on the line. <laughs> yeah. I just saw it from Mikke as he did it on your action and now I have to do it as well, <laughs> right? <laughs> Martin is the highly experienced chief and ferry pilot here and he led this mission. Every flight is special. Every, every time it's a different thing, you know. The weather is always different. You never get bored about that. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask is how have you decided to... How have you planned the weather? Well, then uh, let's see what the weather is. So we do it a different way. We do it... Uh, we are not planning this flight according to the weather. We are planning the flight as we always did it, yeah, and see if the weather is suitable, right? right? <laughs> well, there's not um, exactly very many choices here, right? Like you kind of have. Yeah, right. It looks like headwinds from Wick to Iceland up to 18:21. And for Mickey, this is his first time solo. Yeah. yeah. So he did it once riding with you. Correct. But he was still a student pilot. Now he joined us at Diamond, so yeah, that, that's great to have him on board. And he's getting into this uh, long haul flights as well, so this is great. This is your first time soloing this, but you've done some pretty epic ferry trips. Dubai air show, flying over the pyramids, like most of the stuff was Middle East, but the transatlantic ferry until now was the best ever. Final brief? Final brief. Yeah, only weather which you might have is here on the route up to Praha. Yeah, the seat good, yeah. one cell here. What is this? Uh, ah, Vienna. Okay, yeah, but this is not okay. where we're flying. No, we're going up here. Yeah. We will go ahead. If you get some icing, we'll report it on the, on the company frequency and, and let you know. On the SIG chart, you see that the, the center of the system is more to the east, actually. So if you avoid, I think it's better to avoid to the west. Yeah. Yeah. Here, 4 is icing on the up to 120, yeah. so easy to overfly. Yep. We just picked him from, from flight school, more or less, so the flight hours is health is impressing what his experience and knowledge is uh, compared to the flight hours. Get the right. seats, mate. Okay, get in the seats, let's do it. Okay, I'm left seat, so it's time to put away the camera. See you on the other side. And he's like trilingual, which is pretty impressive. Oh yeah, 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 Swedish and, and English and German for sure. And I guess pretty much all you guys have to be able to speak like three languages or two languages anyway around here. Well, we learn English, right, as a primary language, and we do usually have the one or the other one, yeah. Paper power is set, and here we go. Atlantic, I'm on my way. So, engine and cement checked, airspeed is alive, two times, cross check 50. So you're going to be 10 minutes behind us, but that's a long 10 minutes, like you're still on your own in a lot of ways. I'm on my own, yeah, but I've done this before, like flying alone. I flew a 40 down to Oman, so that was single engine, you know, so now I have two, so that's nice. 
I actually watched the first Atlantic Ferry video yesterday to remember some things and just to get used to it again. It's a lot to think about. That wasn't lost on me, and I really appreciated Martin giving me the pilot flying duties. So um, um, you had the hands on the DS62 already, yeah. So this is good. I will let you fly the aircraft, yeah. So you can handle that. I will do the ATC, yeah. Uh, unless you want to do it. <laughs> I don't think. <laughs> but I can but I think I think some just some some uh, task sharing is, is yeah. fine. I think. In case of real emergency, it will take over and you get commands, what I ever need. So then the Alpha can fly to level 160. Alpha level 160, for the Alpha. And flight level change, flight level change. Nose up. Alpha, 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 Alpha. Welcome, guys. It is time. It's The day has come. And Wien, uh, Ausblick Wien is up. Delta Alpha request. Stop the climb with flight level 120. Oscar Delta Alpha, Roger, cleared flight level 120. Cleared flight level 120, Oscar Delta Alpha. Yeah, that's Martin and Mr. Flight Chops. Okay, in the 62. So dial that in. 120. Correct. Correct. And as we are flying flight level, this is different to you because you are changing in 18,000. Uh, we are changing in 10,000 in Austria, but this is different from country to country. Yeah. You go here, PFD option. Standard bar. And the also 14.013 is the standard setting. They're flying the 62, I'm flying this 42 across the Atlantic. Oscar Delta Bravo, your requested level is? 1 to 0 is perfect. Oscar Delta Bravo, Roger. So the next three days, this is gonna be my home. And I tell you what, I'm really excited about that. The following clip from the acceptance flight was very humbling and really let me know what I was gonna be facing. Oscar Delta Bravo, you may leave command. Perfect. Uh, was his response in German? Because I didn't understand what he said. Uh, he said you may leave. You may leave? Yeah. Oh, okay. You may leave. Got it. So between the two languages, the speed, you guys talk in slight word differences, even when they're English, it's hard to keep up. Neustadt, Servus, Auskecker, Unifum, Delta, Bravo, Oscar, PC-12 in Sicht, 2600 Solano. So yeah, the radio work for a flight like this is a big part of the challenge. What you did today is a VFA flight over here in a local area, uncontrolled. Yeah. So this is German, this is wherever you are, it's a local language uh, most of the time, or could be. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, what we are operating now in, in, uh, on the ferry flight, as we're flying in, in IFR rules, yeah, and uh, this, is, this is all English. English, yeah. okay. Yeah. So I do notice even when it's English, the terminology is just slightly different. It is different. It is yeah. different. And, and this is what a ferry flight really is tough to do, right? To, to really accommodate with all the different kind of ATC rules and ATC uh, uh, procedures and for sure with the accents of the people, right? Yeah. Yeah, because as you just said, uh, it's super fast over here. Well, <laughs> for us, if you fly into the North Americas, yeah, this is fast ATC, and you have to get into that. Right, because yeah. the American accents are just as hard for you. Oh yeah, that's hard. Yeah. Uh, if, if it's a real American accent, it's hard. Yeah. And then uh, you will you will notice when we go up there from Frobisher Bay into Quebec and so on, they speak French, right? Yeah. Oh, so this is also already a different language over there, but different French. So, so yeah, yeah, I've been there. That's hard. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So. Is there anything that you would want to impress upon a North American pilot that thinking about this type of flying? Martin had so many good answers to this question and that's largely what this entire series is about. So I'll let him answer over the intercom. You are clear to destination via this and this route, fly plan route, yeah. I climb up to certain altitude, but IFR starts when passing a certain altitude. Right. This is where the minimum is, yeah. Below that there is no IFR flight because in, in Austria, in contrast to America and to Canada, there is no uncontrolled IFR flight except for departures and arrivals. Okay. Guys, what's your cruise setting? We're looking for 80%. Check. Then I'm also going to look for 80%. Set that. Once more we check the engine. All looking good. Perfect. So, I think it's breakfast time, right? Right. So, I'll see you later, guys. So, I'll go for some breakfast. Yeah, I don't know what you'd like. I'm good for now. I brought some sandwiches, so if you like one, it's just over the time. Yeah, okay. I appreciate it. I brought some too, so I think we're good. As you see, sniffing oxygen here at level 160. Right, so biological needs, food, oxygen, and hydration, which you won't see us doing much of for obvious reasons. The next episode where we're flying longer legs over water 
and wearing survival suits will address that. For now, let's talk about the oxygen system. Here is uh, your oxygen cannula. So what did you do? I just recycled the one from the last guest. It's okay for you, right? Put that into your nose. What I usually do, I put that around my ears, yeah, and then tie it up over here. Okay, you got it? I got it. Good. Now you pull on the green. Just pull it right Yeah, out. just pull it up. Now the all the lines are pressurized. And you see here, this, uh, nine and nine this is the flow meter. You hold that vertical. It's already it's already supplying oxygen. You see it on the ball hovering. You go to that adjustment screw over here. And if you screw it in, less oxygen will flow. And if you go out, more will flow. And you adjust it to the altitude you're going to. So we go 160, so something between 15 and 18 on the oxy-saver scale and not on the mask scale. Mask is different. more, yeah, this is um, both is continuous flow, but here with this bird over here, yeah, you can actually decrease the, the oxygen flow a lot. Okay. Okay? Yep. And then from time to time we check over here that the oxygen pressure is good. I get mine. We are climbing okay. through 140 at the moment and we are above clouds already. Should we report to Mickey about the climb? Yeah, we can do that. We just um, climbed up to flight level 160 uh, to avoid the weather. Perfect. The route today, we're flying up to Sundborg and thereafter, uh, so Sundborg in Denmark, thereafter from Sundborg to Echo Golf Papa Charlie, which is week after Echo Golf Papa Charlie, we go to Reykjavik and sleep there tonight. So yeah, that's day one. Yeah, I can't wait to see Iceland again. Let's get the flight plans from Four Flight here over to the Garmin G1000. We have flight stream 510 in here. So that's quite easy, I just put here, get the flight plan I have, and press here, send it to the panel. Here's the message, I press enter, and we're not activating it because we're flying a different flight, and we're gonna store it, okay? So this is the flight from Echo Golf Papa Charlie Vic, Scotland to Bravindio Romakilo Reykjavik in Iceland. Bambra Devbirat so Alda Nasra Ekulima, that's correct. Store. Okay, and next one. That's the flight to from uh, Reykjavik to Sandestrem, where we overfly Kulosuk here, and then go further. Store. Next one will be Sandestrem to Frobisher Bay, reaching Canadian soil. So on the 42, that's pretty cool. You can choose between the cross pointer and the, like the wing thing. So you have two options for the flight director. That's nice. I like the cross pointer. Echo Uniform Delta Alpha, contact Freeman Radar 13645. 136. So that will be my next frequency. So I tuned it already. So always stay ahead of the flight. And yeah, can't wait to see the ocean again. I miss it a lot. Here's a little hint about the performance of the 62, which is quite nice. In a flight level of 120 to 140, don't quote me on the exact numbers, but just as a rule of thumb, the power you set over here, if you put a 1 to the front, yeah, you got the, uh. the not true airspeed, okay? And if you divide that by 10, 8.5, you get the fuel flow, <laughs> okay? So very easy per side. So, so we are now doing 85%, which gives us around 885 true airspeed, and it's about 8.5 fuel flow. That's cool. The first success is not a not a not a linear curve, but it appears to be a very flat curve. It's between 50% and 90%. You can really use that rule of thumb quite nicely. So what's exciting is the RV14 can almost do these kind of numbers. Just can't carry as much. <laughs> it's a fast little airplane. Camera power? Yeah. I haven't wired it yet, but I'm gonna wire in all my cameras. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. So you never have to worry about battery? That's the plan. Yeah, we've been like coming for the 90. Yeah. We got the Thunderbolt EXP119 version, so I think it's getting close to 230 horsepower, and the airplane is tiny, right? And we have the uh, G3X Touch and the GTN 750. Okay. So I still need to learn how to use the GTN 750, but the, the, the G3X, oh my gosh. I'm gonna try real hard not to touch this thing. So far, so good. But it's like, dude, you know, touch everything. Yeah. Set the altimeter, change frequency. 
it's just amazing. I was a little bit too conservative thinking at the moment about touch screens uh, in the cockpit. If it work, works out correctly in turbulence and so on, and then you always have this fingerprints on there and so on. But yeah, yeah but we have it in the Star 50, the Garmin G3000. Nice. What does Tour Flight say? Which kind of headwinds do we have? We have at about 10, 12 knots headwinds or something we can easily overcome in three hours. So with vertical track, even when you bug the altitude, you still have to give it a, a rate. Like if I didn't give it a rate, what would it do? If I bugged 7,000, would it, it would be like I can't go there because you didn't tell me how to go there? Uh, correct. If you, this is always a clearance rim, limit, right? If you don't dial that down, it will not descend. That I get, but the uh, uh, the speed. Yeah. I have to also tell it that. No, you you tell it over here. Right. Uh, so this was just a preliminary setting. Okay. But what I do now is, for example, because we now have a little bit of change of, of routing, uh, I go here and press vertical direct two. So what it does now, from press position and altitude, it will it will uh, calculate a straight path down to that altitude constraint. Yeah. Activate. And now it's centered. Right. And we wait a couple of seconds. Wait for the V path to be activated. There you go. And now the vertical speed is gone with all the settings you did over here. And it will fall now 533 feet per minute down with a 1.6 degree angle. Now we are full on track. Do you guys have any update from the rover already? Uh, it's uh, no winds and clouds and visibility, okay. So, so procedure. So we're gonna we're gonna do a visual, but we should back it up with an approach. Yes, we're gonna load load the RMP on the two approach. Thirty two. Darrow standard. We should change that. Correct. The changes then when when the clearance is not flight level anymore, but he clears us down, descend five thousand feet or four thousand feet. Okay. Yeah. Then we ch and then he gives us also the local quinage. One little heads up over here. German Denmark border is pretty close to Sonderburg. Yeah and they don't let you down below 4,000 feet because of some military areas. You see them over here. Yeah. So then they will change you over to Copenhagen, Copenhagen directly to Sonderburg. What I had recently is that it takes a while until Copenhagen gives you to, to Sonderburg and then you're basically already in their traffic zone. So we, ch we entered it at 10,000, was that right? In Austria, here here the transition altitude is about 5,000, okay. 4,000 feet. Yeah. For example, here transition altitude on this airport is 3,000 feet. This is actually uh, published on the on the approach chart. Yeah, what we did what we did brief yet is how the airport looks like. Yeah, quite easy. 32 land, vacate via Bravo, and then we just park over here. I hear it. Okay, that's my phone. <laughs> so it's telling me that I'm entering Denmark or something. <laughs> Maybe. I love having this many, like, you've entered this country messages all in a row, which just fell. Oh, yeah, yeah. You never, you never see that many countries in one flight anymore than in Europe. That's awesome. <laughs> so that's, that's country number three today for you. No, four. Denmark, right? Austria, Czech Republic, Germany, and now Denmark. Number five will come up. And then uh, number six, Iceland. That's crazy. That's European. Very cool. And Oscar Delta Bravo descent to 3000 feet and QNH 1029. 1029er, 3000 Oscar Delta Bravo. So I'm gonna take out a bit of power here. Is Mickey getting all the same thing? Looks like. I will say proceed to activate back to final so we have all the information already. So it'll be the flight director will be guiding us, but it won't be flying it because we're on heading mode. Correct. So we can put approach mode, but we are not cleared yet. We are cleared on the heading. Yeah. The clearest landing data. It's runway 32. Altimeters are set. Comnav FMS is set. Sequence of fast and just for backrest upright. Parking brake is check released. Runner trim is as required. E warning. Fire test. Left, right engine fire and check gear. And off okay, to uniform Delta Alpha, we have the airport is five seven have a visual approach. Landing taxi, fuel selectors, full on. And uh, maintain your heading and I'll call you back shortly. Fuel pumps, one, two. And this checklist is completed, next is final. So, in the descent for Sunderborg. Sunderborg, Oscar Echo, uniform Delta Alpha, again on your frequency, and we are established on final for runway 32. Oscar Delta Alpha identified, 32, wind is calm, QNH 1029, no traffic on the runway, landing pilot's discretion. 
Well, so Martin and Steve are 15 miles ahead. Uh, they already have the airport in sight. Uh, I think I have it too. Guide path is intercepted, so this is fine. Oh. LPV approach, we have S bus, we don't need RAIM. Because it's in At approach mode, it can blow past that. Right. Yeah. Correct. On the glide path, it actually leaves the altitude, that's correct. Yeah. Okay, so we got uh, five miles out. Yeah, so if you like, you can anytime put the gear. And the nice thing is with the green, I have no other way to check. Gear and 40% power. It will slow you down to 135 knots, so that you can then deploy the first flap speed. Yeah, that's nice flat. when you know the number is A. Oh uh, yeah, did it before. Comes, okay. One notch. Okay. And the speed is checked. Flaps landing. And looking for a speed of 85 over threshold. Usually that could be done with 45%. And then we do the checklist. Flaps, landing, gear, three green, rudder, trim, and uh, almost neutral. Okay, there's the white arc, full flaps. Full flaps. So I'm gonna step out of the pedals now. So, final check, gear down, three greens, red light gone, flaps, landing, and parking brake is released. And we are cleared to land. So see how nicely this works with 40% power? Yeah, I'm just bumping it a tiny bit because we're getting slow. Yeah, yeah, just a little bit. We want, we want 95 right to the fence, right? Yeah, 95 is good. Minimums, minimums. Ha, huh, this is better, huh? Yeah. No, no, no bump, nothing. If we would have been in IMC, we would approach the minimums now. Minimums. And of course we continue. One more time, three green. I'm going fully visual now. And this is my first approach and landing for the trip, which I wasn't super impressed with. A little bit too low here and the landing wasn't awesome. But uh, they get better. Yeah. And 80. Final threshold. Very good. Welcome to Sundborg. Alright, so the emergency suit is on. We just stopped at our first stop in Denmark. And now it's... The next leg will involve some pretty big water crossings, so that's why the suits are going on. So if you missed it, episode one from this series has already been published, and I'm going to continue to put this series out back to back over the coming weeks. This is definitely the biggest project that I've ever been a part of, and huge thanks to sponsors and Patreon supporters for making it sustainable to create. Tons of editing work goes into this stuff, and I can't thank you guys enough for the support. Watch for longer, kind of uncut, raw videos on the supporter feed while I'm editing, which I share there. And until next time, keep your flight chop sharp. Oh, good job, man. Iceland. Here we are. <laughs> That's so crazy. Nice.